So, hi everyone. Thanks for being here for the last session. So, I'm Hugo Bertin and I'm going to present some work entitled Disconnecting Games with a Single Packet, an Unreal Untold Story. This is joint work with Ilias Benabour, Professor Marc Dacier and Professor David Bromberg and between the University of Rennes and Kaost in Saudi Arabia. So, firstly, I'm going to introduce the video games industry and why is cheating a major threat for this industry. Before disclosing new denial of service attacks exploiting the game engine Unreal Engines, and exploiting its networking components. Then we'll proceed to a demonstration on well-known game. And lastly, we'll approach all the different aspects that are related to launching this attack uh, in a real gaming environment. So, the video games industry is a booming industry. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it has been booming these last years. It's a huge market. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's fine. Yeah, so it involves a lot of money. It's a huge market. This can be observed with, with uh, this can be observed by recent massive investment, such as Saudi Arabia, which invested more than 20 billions recently. And, uh, but this can also be observed by uh, the continuously growing interest in esports competition. Maybe it's back. Maybe it's uh, there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, esports uh, esports are uh, are gaming competitions and always attracts more viewers and always and tournaments always propose bigger cash prizes. So what do we have here? We have a lot of money. A lot of money. Like, what does what does money uh, often attracts? It often attracts fraudsters, and these frauds here can take the form of cheating actions, with a, a lot of uh, anecdotal cases that have been uh, witnessed recently. So. In online games, there is a, fo a focus uh, for cheat developments on the client level, um, with well-known cheats such as mbots, uh, wall hacks. But some mitigation solutions exist for these cheats. I I'm not saying that it is a 100% efficient mitigation solution, but they are here. In this talk, we will focus on the network, which is also really interesting for cheating because it is required for all the communication between the client and the server. So, before disclosing the new attacks uh, exploiting uh, Unreal Engine, which is a game engine, we have to introduce what's a game engine. So, um, basically, it's a software framework uh, that is here to simplify the game development, uh, mainly simplifying the complexity related to the virtual world, re uh, virtual world rendering in a game. Um, it's basically common libraries that can be reused uh, to implement different aspects, such as uh, the physics engines or the graphics, and also networking. So, if we have to highlight something here, it's that many games share same pieces of code. Um, in this talk, uh, we'll be talking about Unreal Engine, this uh, Epic Games game engine, and it presents two main advantages for us. The first one is that the source code is publicly available, making, making it easier for experimentation, and it also powers uh, some well-known games of the industries. For the communication, um, well, uh, yeah, so the communication are based on an application layer protocol based upon UDP. Before being able to use this protocol, um, players have to join the game session. So firstly, they authenticate themselves to the game provider server to retrieve information about the game server, so about the, uh, the server hosting the game session. Then 
uh, the game client itself co uh, contacts the game server by um, sending a packet to the game server to initiate a, a connection process through a handshake. And once, once this handshake has, uh, is performed, if it is successful, the connection is established and the client and server can now uh, communicate. Two main points that we have to highlight here are that the game server uh, identifies clients based on the IP address and port numbers they used, only based uh, on this information. And uh, that the game server's IP address and ports are, all the, uh, are the same for all the clients. They all contact the server on the same port. So uh, let's start with a really high level overview of the vulnerability. So uh, it is related to the packets reception uh, process in the engine. So what happens when a packet is uh, received? First, some sanity checks are performed to verify that the, that, uh, the packet is compliant with some aspects of uh, Unreal Engine's protocol. So if the test passes, uh, there is no problem, the packet can be processed further. Otherwise, if it doesn't pass, it's kind of suspicious. And the design choice that have been made here by the developers is to disconnect uh, the player um, associated with this packet. So disconnecting means that the client, the player associated, cannot send uh, any more packets to the server. If he wants to do it again, so I mean he can, but the packets won't be accepted. And if he wants to um, to do it again, he has to uh, to reperform the the connection process we just talked about. Uh, this behavior is the same at the server and at the client level. So, basically here, if we are able to send a packet using the IP address and ports of a player, uh, we are able to uh, disconnect this player from the game. So, now that we have talked about some 40 packets, let's understand uh, how we did to, uh, to identify preci more precisely those packets. So in parallel, we use some static code analysis on the source code which is available. And we also uh, experiment uh, doing some profiling on a, on a toy game, so a really simple game we developed ourselves, we developed ourselves on the engine. And so yeah, so I'm not expecting you to be able to read everything here, but we, ha we can see, you, have to, you, ha you, ha you will have to trust me, but you we can see one interesting function here, which is, uh, the disconnect uh, which is a unit connection close function, which is a function handling the disconnection process in Unreal Engine. And all the other functions represent the color graph of this function. We can uh, see another interesting function, which is the uh, receive raw packet, which is the first uh, method called when receiving a packet. And we can see other types of functions, such as uh, the, the one in green, uh, remove split screen viewer, which is related to the split, split screen mode. Uh, so as you can guess, it doesn't interest us here. We have a, a lot of other functions like that that are not called following the reception of a packet. You, can, you cannot see any edge between the first received raw packet function and those functions in green. So uh, let's remove them to have something uh, more clean. Now we have only uh, five methods which enable us to uh, investigate a bit more the code uh, which is uh, written within those functions in order to understand what's, uh, in, a, what's in a packet received, what information embedded in a packet received can lead to the player getting disconnected. So, we did that and we identified five different ways of sending, uh, of, of crafting uh, a packet that won't pass the sanity check and so disconnect the player. We won't detail uh, all of these uh, packets exhaustively here uh, for the sake of time and because it's not the most, uh, import, uh, most interesting thing to understand which field uh, to set to one and which field to set to zero. But none of these techniques that we identified require any knowledge about a previous packet. The only uh, information you need to see your packets reaching uh, his target and getting accepted 
is the good source uh, IP address and port number and the good destination uh, IP address and port number. So it, either the clients as a source and the server as a destination, or, uh, or it can be the other way as well. Um, so every time I, I'm, uh, I'm talking to someone about this vulnerability, uh, the first thing they are saying is, yeah, but if games use a crypto layer to prevent you from uh, modifying the packets, from sending a, yeah, a modified packet, it won't work. So just before answering the question, I have to briefly introduce the, the structure, a really high level overview of the structure of the packets used. Uh, we can separate this packet between two uh, different parts. The first one is a header containing protocol-related information. And the next one is the header for the benches and the bunches, which contain all the uh, information which is re related to the state of the game. Um, so basically, all the sensitive information that you don't want to expose uh, to cheaters. So... The choice that have been made here while implementing uh, the, the encryption mechanisms that are available uh, in the engine are to only encrypt uh, after the header only the sensitive information. However, we are, we are one of our techniques we found uh, use, the, uh, use the information uh, in the header to, uh, to send a faulty packet not passing the check and to uh, disconnect the player. So, um, yeah, encryption is not for the thing here. It's not, it's not a solution, a uh, mitigation uh, against our attacks. So let's now uh, proceed to the demonstration. Uh, so the first demonstration is filmed on uh, Valorant. Um, and all the players are playing within the same LAN as it could be the case in an eSport uh, tournament. So for those who, who are not uh, familiar with Valorant, uh, I'll, uh, um, I will explain uh, really quickly, we really simplify it. But basically, uh, you have two teams. Uh, one uh, attacker's team who have to place a bomb, which takes 30 seconds to detonate after being placed. And uh, one defender's team who have to defend against this bomb. If the bomb is placed, they can defuse it by pressing a button for seven seconds. So you'll be viewing the screen of a defender. Um, and the scenario that you'll be seeing in the video is the defender killing the last attacker. However, this attacker had the time to place the bomb before dying. So the defender is likely to win. He only has to defuse the bomb and he has time for that. However, the attacker will launch an attack uh, on his side, and you'll see, you will see the effect of the attack by uh, seeing the defender getting disconnected and rejoining the game and dis getting re-disconnected again and again, and he won't have time to uh, defuse the bomb before, begin, before getting re-disconnected. So he kills the last attacker, and he, he can now try to defuse the bomb. He's trying to defuse, he's almost there, and he gets disconnected. He's almost there, and gets disconnected again. If you look at the score here, you can see that the opponents have only one point. And uh, while he was disconnected, the bomb explodes. If you can see here that the opponents have now uh, two points, and it's written in, in really uh, sm small, so you may not be able to see, but it's written, attackers win. So defenders lost. The next demonstration is filmed on Fortnite with uh, different players. So three different players playing on a PlayStation. They are all in their um, in their private network. Uh, yeah. You'll be seeing uh, uh, you'll be seeing the screen of only two players: player A and player B. In the beginning of the video, player B will kill uh, player C, and this information will be displayed on everyone's screen. And player A will use this information, so uh, containing the name of player B, to try to connect to player B uh, using the PlayStation Network. So the PlayStation Network is a social network related to the PlayStation that provides peer-to-peer -peer call. 
So we will use this name to uh, call player B, and player B will see a call arriving and he will answer. Uh, why would he not? And so now player, ha player A has uh, player B's IP and they will launch an attack which will result in player B being kicked out of the games. So you can see player B on the, on the right uh, killing C and this is displayed on the screen. Now uh, player A is using the PlayStation Network to call player B. With, with the information he just got. And the player B just received the call and uh, accepted it. So now they can talk uh, with each other, uh, which is uh, by the, at the same time leaking player B's uh, IP address to A. And now they are trying to fight. Player B is likely to kill player A. But yes, here he gets kicked out of the game. So player A is alone in the game, he is likely to win. And you'll see player B is no, uh, is completely disconnected, he is uh, within the Fortnite lobby now. So yeah, cannot play anymore. So, so we have uh, submitted this vulnerability to five different uh, video game studios uh, that are impacted by the vulnerability. But the, despite our uh, detailed explanation on how to reproduce the attacks, uh, they didn't, uh, they considered our report as informative. They didn't deny the vulnerability, they were um, considering it, but they were doubting about the difficulty to uh, reproduce the attacks uh, in a concrete uh, real life cases, in a concrete uh, gaming environment, for the three uh, following points. The first one was because of the difficulty to find an IP address on the internet. The second one is because of the difficulty to spoof an IP address on the internet. And the third one uh, was, yeah, but even if uh, the two first points are possible, you won't be able to send uh, packets to players because they are playing behind the firewall, you won't reach them. So let's, uh, let's approach each point, each point one by one. So firstly, finding the IP address of, uh, of the opponent. Uh, you are not even uh, required to do that, uh, to find this IP all the time. For instance, uh, like we've seen in Valorant, when players are within the same LAN, uh, as it could be the case in eSports tournament, uh, you can, so when you're in a LAN, you can uh, just reach uh, every, everyone on the LAN by broad, broadcasting a packet uh, at, the, uh, at the Mac layer and using the broadcast IP address to see the packets accepted by, uh, by the, the opponent's system. Uh, you will need the source IP address as well and port number, but you know them because as I mentioned before, um, the, the game server is the same for everyone. And so the only information that you need here to, uh, to disconnect a player is uh, the destination port number he uses. However, this port is located uh, within the dynamic port range, so it's not a lot of possibility, and it's pretty easy to vote for, so it doesn't take uh, a lot of time. And to hide himself, um, the attacker can spoof another MAC address as, uh, as source. It's just uh, the, the, the address you see here is just a random address, and he can uh, target himself as well, uh, like that if someone is uh, viewing the, the screen, uh, it won't uh, be suspicious. Now, in an online game scenario, if players are not within the same LAN, uh, so we didn't uh, look for um, we didn't look for vulnerabilities. The engine leaking the IP address because other mediums can be directly exploited. Uh, we won't uh, we won't detail them exhaustively here, but uh, you have the uh, the example we used in our demonstration with a PlayStation network which use peer to peer calls so just answering a call uh, uh, leaves an IP address now uh, spoofing an IP address so IP spoofing is the act of falsifying uh, the source IP address uh, to impersonate someone else another, to impersonate another host on the internet 
In theory, uh, ISPs uh, implement source address validation to uh, counter that. So it's basically um, it's basically a filtering that verifies if uh, the, uh, the source claimed in a packet is aligned where the where the location the packets come from. However, not everyone's doing his job. Uh, some ISPs don't enforce SAV well, and even a lot of them, according to this study, uh, which, being, which, um, which shows that almost 70% of the autonomous systems on the internet are vulnerable, vulnerable to spoofing. Um, how to find a vulnerable autonomous system? Um, this can be done using the spoofer project, which is a measurement platform, uh, me uh, pinpointing all the autonomous system uh, on the internet to, the, um, to test uh, the spoof their spoofability, and they publish their results on their website. So it can be used to identify a vulnerable uh, system, autonomous system, and once you have it, you can just contact them uh, to rent a server located within, and you are now able to spoof an IP address. And the last one, uh, players are protected by firewalls. By firewalls, Yes, of course, uh, players are playing behind the firewall, and uh, you won't get their uh, private IP address, but the uh, firewall's IP address. Uh, however, these players are continuously communicating with the game server, so any packet arriving to the firewall with uh, the good information, the good source information, the same source information and uh, destination information than used uh, by the player to communicate with the game server will be accepted by the firewall and routed to this player. So what do we need here is to find this, uh, this address. So the source port and IP address, you know them because once again, it's the same, you can just use the, the game server's one which are the same for everyone. Uh, you know the firewall's IP address uh, if you find it with, uh, with the first point. And you know have to, the only information you have to find is the port number used. So this port is one of the possible ports uh, in the model. Um, but it's not uh, that many uh, possibilities. Uh, for instance, if you send, uh, if you try to brute force it by sending a packet of uh, 48 bytes on the wire, uh, which is enough to disconnect a player, by the way. Uh, at 20, if you send packets at 25 megabits per, per second, it will only take one second to brute force. So, uh, what are the potential mitigation uh, to this attack? So firstly, to uh, modify uh, the source code uh, by encrypting the whole packet and on only uh, the sensitive information, and change, uh, so that will protect uh, people from uh, injecting uh, uh, faulty information within the packet. And after doing that, you can uh, change the design shells that have been done by disconnecting players sending a faulty, uh, receiving a faulty packet, um, to not disconnect them, but just drop the packet. You can also directly use uh, TLS to secure the transport layer, or DTLS, the UDP version. And, but, and as we say, despite, uh, despite reporting this, uh, this to, uh, to an, uh, Unreal Engine, they didn't want to fix it. So we encourage game developers to, uh, to, di to di directly do their modification. As the source code is available, they can di directly modify it themselves. So, um, to conclude that, uh, so first, um, game engines are really powerful tools, simplifying the game development, but at the same time, they, uh, make, uh, they make the vulnerability spreads wider. So, it's really, uh, it's really primordial to enforce, um, to enforce the security directly at the engine level. Uh, we discussed and explained new uh, denial of service attacks, um, which are uh, kind of easy to put in practice. Uh, you, you just have to send a packet to disconnect a player. It is doable by, by a lot of people. 
Uh, but that's what makes uh, this, uh, this attack really powerful, because with only one packet, or, or, a co or some packets, because you, you brought for the port, you are able to cause significant damage. So we really see the, this talk, this publication, as an eye-opener for that community to, um, to make them fix, fix this vulnerability. And um, yeah, because the reporting process showed, um, showed us that they were, they, there is a lack of consider, consideration and uh, awareness about the network uh, level security in the games. Beyond that, uh, Unreal Engine is also used in a lot of uh, other, uh, other domains. Um, for instance, in virtual reality, in digital twins, uh, automotive HMI. So even if we didn't um, look for, for another exploit of that vulnerability in these uh, environments, it might lead to something more critical tomorrow. So that's why we argue that it is extremely important to let people know about it and fix uh, that vulnerability. So thank you very much uh, for staying here uh, until the end, and uh, I'm here for the question. Thank you very much. Very interesting, Hugo. Uh, any questions? Ah, we have players over there. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the talk. It was very interesting. Um, you were talking about one mitigation, which was maybe encrypting the whole packet. Mm. But uh, these games run on like really low latency, and it's quite important yeah. that they're like running in real time. Wouldn't encryption add like some delay? In yeah. The, um, yeah, I guess that's exactly why uh, they are only encrypting the end. But um, from observing the packets, the header is usually only uh, 11 bits, I think. And, and the rest of the packets can be really longer, uh, multiple, uh, like uh, more than 100 bits or 200 bits. I, I don't remember. But uh, so it's really not a big difference to, to add... Uh, 11, 11 more bits encrypted, I guess. More questions? Yeah. I see another gamer over there. Uh, thank you uh, for the interesting talk. Um, I have, um, maybe I didn't understood uh, something. Uh, the, um, what did you put in the payload of the UDP packet? So, um, yeah, I didn't detail all the payloads, but um, in the, so, let me take. Uh, so, here, in, uh, in this, um, so, that's uh, basically, that's, uh, yeah, that's a representation of the structure of the packet. And um, so you, you have different fields. And some of these fields are checked to verify the, the compliance with the uh, engine's protocol. Uh, for instance, it can, be, um, it can be some IDs included in the bunch, in the bunches, or it can be some uh, bits in the header. So just some information are, are, are checked to verify that they are compliant with the packet. And if they are if they are not correct, the packets will be it will um, the, yeah the engine will disconnect the player. Okay, so you can put uh, random data in the packets. And, uh, if, if you put random da data, uh, it's likely that it works. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. You have to precisely precisely um, precisely set the good fee the good field to uh, to one or to, or to zero. Of, of, to the values uh, uh, wanted, yeah. But I, I, is, that's because I didn't detail all the possible packets. Okay, thank you. But, but it, it's kind of uh, if you redo the methodology we've done, it's pretty quick to do, to find, or, um, or by, by uh, trying a bit, choosing a bit, you can. Some of, some of the packets working are, easy, are pretty easy to find. Some others are a bit harder. But yeah, if you do a bit of fusing or something like that, you will quickly find uh, 
le paquet. Thank you very much. Any last questions before we go for the price of the challenges? No last questions? Thank you very much. <laughs>